happy Thursday, December 17th, the day that the snow has gone. Or shall I say the day after? Yeah, it's, it was today. Yeah. It's good. And guess what song we had planned? White Christmas. We didn't even know. <laughs> Who could have known? Who knew? Who knew? Well, I'm sad to say there's another sad story to this song. I don't like sad songs, and I like them less when I was a kid. I would rather listen to Grandma Got Run Over by a Reindeer. My family, for some reason, really love Please Daddy Don't Get Drunk This Christmas <laughs> by John Denver while we trim the tree. <laughs> we would just sing it happily. <laughs> um, so, yeah, but this is, this is yet another depressing one. 50 million copies sold. Not only is Bing Crosby's White Christmas the best-selling Christmas song of all time, it's also the best-selling single ever, according to Guinness World Records. It first aired in the during the Kraft Music Hall radio show. Yes, Kraft as in mac and cheese. On December 25th, 1941. Okay, history buffs, ding, ding, ding. Then Bing Crosby crooned the carol, which is soulful, longing, and sad anyway, but especially at the time because Pearl Harbor had just been attacked. It turns out the song has a sad backstory too. It was written by Irving Berlin, a wonderful American composer, Russian born immigrant who, interestingly enough, did not celebrate Christmas as he was Jewish. Um, his three week old son had died on Christmas day in 1928. <sighs> so every year on December 25th, he and his wife would visit their baby's grave. This deep secret of the song may be that Berlin responded in to, the mel to his melancholy with this song uh, about the death of his, their son. He wrote White Christmas for a musical that eventually morphed into the movie Holiday Inn and ended up winning an Academy Award for the song. In 1954, it was the title track of another Bing Crosby Christmas musical, White Christmas. Crosby's rendition quickly became an American favorite, even though the original radio recording was lost. And the 1942 version, which was said to have only taken 18 minutes, was worn out, according to Seattle's KUOW. It was constantly requested by troops during Bing Crosby's USO appearances overseas, which gave the singer some mixed feelings. He said, I hesitated about doing it because invariably, it caused such a nostalgic yearning among the men that it made them sad. Heaven knows it didn't come that far to make them sad. For this reason, several times I tried to cut it from the show, but these guys just hollered for it. Clearly they identified with the wistful lyrics about holidays at home. Since then, White Christmas has been covered by everyone from Elvis to Karen Carpenter to Lady Gaga, but its timeless message remains the same. <coughs> so, <clears throat> for our version, <coughs> excuse me, I decided why not have a bit of a ukulele accompaniment because you know on the personality system of the Enneagram I'm a very solid eight challenger but I also have a big seven wing which is the enthusiast which means I don't like to be sad too much so uh, I try to make it a little more peppy
Good evening.